Hello everyone, this is Shell C from Paper Rock Tio Studio and today I'm sharing with you my Stencil Girl Creative Team project. It is a stenciled tunic tee and it is for the month of March 2020. The theme was stenciled poetry or spring break party. So Peg Robinson and I chose floral stencils and some stencils that had some words on them to kind of combine the poetry idea or words, stenciled words, with some spring themes. So for my uh, wearable art stenciled t-shirt, I first washed the t-shirt in hot water with no fabric softener and I also dried it without fabric softener. This process removes the sizing in the fabric that is used to keep the fabric clean and um, less wrinkly when it's in the store. And you want to get that stuff out because it repels. You don't want your, your things that you're putting on there to be repelled. Then the next thing I did is I took some freezer paper, which has a shiny side and a dull side. And using the shiny side down, I ironed it on the inside of the shirt. This will prevent the inks and paints that I'm using to um, go through the shirt and get onto the back side of the shirt. You want to make sure there's something in between the two layers of the shirt so that you don't end up with stuff on the back that you didn't want. Then I placed some paint. I wanted some lighter colors, color blocking in the background because I knew the stencils that I, were that I was using had very fine lines. So I wanted some color. So I used painter's tape and made a couple rectangles on the shirt and then I used a sponge pouncer to um, sponge on DecoArt So Soft fabric paint in a yellow mixed with white and then a blue mixed with white trying to just make some light blocks of color and this works pretty well to get the the fabric saturated um, the color in there nice and saturated after this step, you probably should iron the shirt to get it dry before the next steps, but I didn't. <laughs> I'm impatient, so I just kept on stenciling and sponging and going crazy with the shirt. And then I ironed everything to heat set it at the end, as well as um, after I ironed it, then I put it in the dryer for, you know, 20 minutes just to make sure everything was completely dry and heat set onto the shirt. So once this portion was done, I pulled off the tape and now I have a couple blocks of color. Maybe I should put a, put a third pink one or something, but I thought that was enough coverage just to give me some sort of color in the background. So now I'm going to move to my floral background that's going to be the colorful background behind the words that I'm going to stencil on later. So this is layer two and I used some pixie spray low tack spray on the stencil. Um, I just held it to the side, sprayed it, shook it a few times to get it somewhat dry. And it's, it's kind of like post-it note glue. It's not very sticky and it helps the stencil stay down so that you don't get seepage underneath. And so then to apply, because this stencil, which is um, L646 from Christy Taylor, I think it's called Floral Mandala. Um, it's got really fine lines and the sponges don't work very well to get into those fine lines and through to the fabric. So I switched to some brushes. These were designed to apply makeup. They kind of look like tooth brushes and I ordered these from uh, Amazon and they just, they had the bristles help to go through these, this very fine line stencil. I pounce up and down with the bristles. I don't rub or scratch because I really am trying to make sure that no paint seeps under the stencil and uh, makes my design smeary. <laughs> I don't like a smeary design. So these come in different sizes and I just bought a couple multi-packs. So I have some larger ones and some smaller ones and you'll see me switching out um, different ones. I'm using some purple, some orange, some pink, and some yellow, and a bright green. The The thing that I'm putting the paints out on from the, from the little bottles is palette paper. It's kind of like a waxy paper that you can use 
as a palette. And then um, when you're done with it, you can just throw it away. So that's kind of nice. And it, it looks cleaner than my my plate that you guys see me use occasionally, which is completely covered with paint, my plate palette. So I'm just continuing to uh, stencil and I'm, it's going well over the light colored yellow background that I put on there, so I don't need to worry about that. Adding different colors in different places and trying to keep within the lines of the stencil. Um, you know, like here's a flower, here's a flower, here's a flower. I want to stay the colors within the areas of the stencil and the stencil brushes help with that as well. So that's my first stencil section. Then I flip the stencil the other direction and um, press it down real good so that I can stencil another whole section of it. And I'm going to speed that up a little bit so you don't have to watch it as slow. Um, this video, of course, is sped up four times fast and in some sections it's eight times fast. So it's not real time. You can't get this done as fast as it seems like I'm getting it done. <laughs> Super speed, yeah. So I'm using different colors on the flowers this time in different areas than I did the last time. Still the same colors, but in, on different flowers to give more variation. And also, of course, I turned the stencil the other direction. And then I realized that the blue is a little bit too bright um, underneath the stencil and the colors are coming out a little bit muddy over the blue square. So I used the white paint and I stenciled all the areas where it was going to go over that blue paint with white first. And then I came back in with the colors, with the pinks and the, the greens and the oranges and yellows and whatever colors I was using. And that really helped to make them stand out from that blue background. I apparently didn't mix enough white into it to make it a real pale color like I had intended to. So putting the white through the stencil first worked out well for that to help them stay more bright. And I'm winging it as to where I put the colors. Um, after I started to put the color, the big orange flower down there, I thought I, it should have been uh, purple. <laughs> it should have been, but you know. It is what it is. It came out the way it did. So then I'm switching to the L312 Love Collage designed by Tracy Bautista. This is a more of a mask style stencil. It's not in enclosed inside a rectangle. So it's a little bit more tricky. But I'm using this one to integrate my design and also to extend it in some areas where I felt that it needed something else. Um, you know, you don't want two blocks of rectangle rectangle here, rectangle here, bam, you're done. Now you need it to be more organic and more interesting and then the area in between the two stencils needs to be integrated so that it appears to be all one design instead of um, just two stencils slapped on there. So that's what I'm using this stencil for. It has some flowers, it has some like little sprig things that come off which look kind of cool when you do the green over them and then it has some circles and some swirls and just different interesting things and it it really goes well with this other stencil uh, because of the circular nature of some of the design and of course the other stencil is very circular in nature as well so like that little swirly thing at the side looks really cool I, I liked it I thought that our choices this month uh, went well together. Of course, I pair up with Peg Robinson when I do my creative team um, projects, and we we choose our stencils and use the same stencils. So she'll have a different project that is using the same four stencils that I used, so that you can get an idea of how to how two different people in two different parts of the country uh, who rarely meet still can use the same stencils. To make something interesting. We have a very different style so it's always fun to see what she made and you know I made this she made that so yeah look out for her video as well. 
So then I started adding in some white here and there um, to break up the color blocks a little bit with the circles. And that worked out well. So now I want to add my, well, poetry. It's more like just words, um, free flowing words, but I'm using the Finding Your Tribe stencil designed by Carolyn Doobie. And then I'm also going to use the 6x6 six six stencil from Stencil Club October 2018, which has a lot of really cool words on it. The whole stencil is just a bunch of words and they're perfect for this project. And it's designed by Nancy Curry. So um, that was from the Stencil Club. If you don't know about Stencil Club, you can join Stencil Club for $25 a month and you get three exclusive stencils that no one else can get um, except for club members. You also get a video with the designer um, making a project with the stencils that she designed. And usually Mary Beth Shaw also uh, showcases the stencils on live streams on her uh, Facebook page. You can also purchase past Stencil Club stencils if you're a member of the club. So you can just buy ones from the past. So if you really wanted this one, which is now showing up right now, um, stay in your magic. It's the 6x6 six six one from that Stencil Club set. You get a 4x4, four four, a 6x6, six six, and a 9x12 each month. Exclusive stencils. No one else can buy them. But you can go back and buy them if you're in the club. So this one has really cool words like, words like you know, authentic and imperfect and magical, curious, wild, epic, kind. These are the words that I really think about my art sisters, which is what this t-shirt is about. Um, people that I've met who are interested in art, some of them are on the club with me, like Peg. Um, <clears throat> others are ones who make YouTube videos that I I have connected with and that's what I'm making this shirt about. I have a plan in the future to make some shirts like this for these friends that I'm talking about and um, share them because I bought these shirts for one dollar on clearance. <laughs> so that's really awesome, right? I can make shirts for everyone. So I'll be using these same stencil designs to make more of these shirts in the future to, to give to my art sisters. So in some cases I need to tape off sections of <clears throat> the stencil and I can just use some painter's tape for that so that I don't um, accidentally get paint where I don't want it on these little tiny designs. And I'm using the very smallest brush that I have to do this <clears throat> with the black paint over the top. So this is layer three. The words are layer three. I hope you've, you've enjoyed this project and you're thinking about maybe making your own stenciled shirt. Um, if you have enjoyed it, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and turn on your notification bells because that's how our channels grow. So I'm just finding different words on the two different stencils, the tribe stencil and the... the um, Stay in your magic stencil to put kind of in a diagonal down the shirt from one corner to the other over the, the flower designs. And I decided to add these bigger letters at the end. That was my, the last thing that I did pretty much um, because it could, it could say my tribe of art sisters instead of what it says by just lining it up. Of course, the stencils are nice and nice and translucent, so you can line up things really well through the stencil, which is nice. You don't want them to be too opaque. You want to be able to see through, see where, where you're stenciling. <clears throat> I went over the black a couple times on some of these, and it did get a little bit under the stencil, but I don't really mind. It still looks good. So I'm just going to put a couple more words on there to kind of fill in my angled flow of words about my art sisters and then I will be done. So thanks for watching this video. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.